I was breaking through some stuff and I found a light that uh, I've had for a while. Now, I can't remember if I bought this online or got it from a outlet, but it has a current limited output supply and the cable goes into this sort of really heavy metal core. I'm guessing it's uh, aluminium, but I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Let's get the magnet. It's steel. Okay, so I'm wrong. It's a steel core. And I'm going to unplug it for this. I mean, it's rated... Uh, they claim it's rated about 2 watts. Hold on, let's see what it says here. Uh, it says it's rated for 700 milliamp output, uh, and this power supply is for 1 to 3 watts. Also says it's got a power factor of 0.98. Really? Hold on. I'll focus back down a bit because... I was focused up high for that initially. No, actually, I'll leave it up high for focus because I, I want to actually... I'll just lift this up a bit. I want to actually take a closer look in there. So let's plug this in and see what the power factor is. And it is, sorry about the flickery display, it says 0.5, suggesting a standard switch mode power supply. It says, it says 5 watts. I did notice earlier on this gets pretty warm in use. That's a bit annoying. I wonder if this can be improved. But one of the things there that inspired me to actually dig this out, I'll show you it right now. I know that uh, many of you actually have lathes, and if you unscrew the end of this, it's got a standard plastic collimating lens. It's got a fairly standard LED, not this, not the uh, full-size Superflux type LED. I wonder if this is hollow in the middle then. It may well be. Uh, so it's got the standard sort of uh, high-power LED on the cob, not cob, the little circuit board, like, like the uh, traditional Luxian star, but smaller. Um, and a 3-watt LED on top of that. Let's uh, take the screw to that. Let's disassemble this completely because I'm thinking if you've got a lathe or access to a lathe, then this could be an interesting project to get a piece of aluminium bar and machine it out because the only optical components involved in this are this existing and very available plastic lens. You can get the lens off eBay, you can get those LEDs off eBay and the Approach, common approach to putting these on, I noticed they've screwed this down and they've used the heatsink compound, but a common approach is normally just to have such a close fit that the uh, lens itself, as you tighten up, pushes the LED onto the heatsink. And in that sense, theoretically, you might not even need a uh, carrier plate at all. So I've taken those screws out. That's loose. Now, how have they threaded this down then? Now I get to, where's my spudger? I'm all just sort of, this is just one of those felt pads in the bottom that is coming off completely because I don't think it's going to come off in a dignified manner. There is what appears to be a hole in the middle because I can see a wee indent. Okay, multiple holes. Hmm. I wonder why there's another little hole up there. Where is the cable going up? Oh, there's a screw hole. There's a screw, I think. Or that, or I've just minced something. It feels like a screw. Excuse me, fluffing about here. I'm just trying to... Uh, I've not been into this before, so I don't know what's... There is a screw in there, which is slightly chewing up because it looks like it's been maybe locked in. What is this actually holding in? Oh, you know what? I wonder if that's going up to the other end, if it's holding... I wonder if this is a piece of pipe and they've sandwiched two pieces into it. That would be interesting. This is still turning. Something feels like it's moving. I get the feeling this may be holding a sandwich of the back plate and the front plate together. I wasn't expecting that. I thought this was going to be machined out a solid core. Oh, I don't think anything's moving anymore. 
I think aside from screwing up this light, uh, this is just rotating inside. It doesn't feel like anything's actually coming out. I could pause at this point in time, but it's one of these things that I wasn't expecting this to take quite so long. I could pause and then come back once I've either stripped the thread completely. Right, tell you what, I'm going to do that. So, you think you can defeat me? It appears to be glued in. This is going to be destructive. It's going to look a bit steampunk by the time I've finished here. I'll be back in a moment. Yeah. Know your place, Light. Nothing can defeat Big Clive. It's more complicated than I was expecting. That turns out to be just a weight in the bottom. Uh, this slightly toasty cable. Okay, what do we have here? We have basically a hollow void. Oh, they've got a cable. Look at that. Can you see the cable restraint in the back of that? That's quite interesting. That's an odd approach to take. I wonder why they did that. Um, so, they've got a hole in the side here. And this is just basically a hollow tube that they've cut a couple of threads at each end in, presumably. Now, have they have they threaded the other end? Is it? Yes, it is. I can see the glue. So the other end has also been threaded into this. And they've added this little weight down here, which was just spinning uh, purely to give it mass. And the whole point of this video is I was thinking that it's very simple. And it makes me realise that you could make a USB-powered version by using a USB power supply and a resistor, and certainly in the case of this, you could actually just mount the resistor in here, dissipating onto the body of the, the thing. But in a way, if you've got a lathe, and this is where I'm just going to make this entirely up. So let's uh, go down onto the bench. That's from a previous, uh, previous project. Let's focus down there. So what I was thinking was, if you got a block of aluminium, or rod of aluminium, and you put, let's see how they've done that, they've put a thread on there. So you could thread that round, and if we're looking down the end of it, you could machine out, you could leave that thread, you've got the recessed bit in here, with, say for instance, a traditional Luxian star type LED, which should be kind of like, yeah, something about, yeah, something, something like that with the LED in the middle. And you, then you could drill through the whole length of the light, you could drill a hole going through like that inside. Not sure how practical that is, it would maybe have to be quite a large hole. Um, the alternative is to drill it right down central, a fairly large one underneath this, and just rely on the contact area around the side here. Um, but then you'd need to actually channel it out to bring the cables out. Hmm, tricky. Uh, and at the base, you could have a... You could machine in there uh, for a cable entry, but you could also then actually attach something where you get the... You get resistors in the style of a TO220 package. Like, they look like transistors, but they're actually just resistors. And you could actually screw that in here for heat dissipation or just use a thermal, uh, thermally conductive glue to actually dissipate the heat in here. So supposing you were using a USB power supply, putting out 5 volts, and you were using a, well, would it want... Would it, be one watt. Well, let's compromise. Let's use a three watt LED and run it at two watts, which is about the 700 milliamps. You're going to have to drop two volts across the resistor. So the value of the resistor would be, let's calculate that. Two volts being dropped across the resistor divided by the 700 milliamps is quite a low value. So about three ohms. Is 2.8 ohms a standard value, I think? 2.8 ohms? Three ohms. Somewhere round about that value. Is 2.8 standard? Is it 2.7? But uh, the dissipation from that resistor would be, I'd say just use a 2 watt resistor or better still a 3 watt resistor, but keep in mind it's going to be coupled onto the case anyway. And then that just means you could bring your USB cable in, um, go through that resistor and then through the LED. What's the other things here? The other thing you'd want to do is clamp down top of that. So you'd have to machine 
something that in the simplest form could literally, if that was the LED it was sitting on with the dome and then the lens like that, it could be something as simple as just straight hole through the end. Uh, I notice these lenses have a lip in them. You can get these lenses incidentally from uh, out of uh, the GU10 downlights. I've got, I've got a bit of one here. Uh, you could get three lenses out of one of these typical ones, so or you can buy packs of them on eBay with different beam angles. I think so that could be threaded inside, and it could just basically the whole lock could be open inside except for that circle on the top gripping this lens and just pressing the LED down into place on the heat sink here and then the cables brought either I suppose ultimately you could machine a channel if you brought the hole up centrally but it might be better just actually doing it at one end so you know it's not that complex a thing to make if you have a lathe if you've not got a lathe it is an incredibly complex thing to make but this uh, I thought this was solid initially it, I thought it was solid aluminium because it felt the weight of a solid piece of aluminium but it turns out it's steel and they've just uh, compromised, they've made it hollow to facilitate easy manufacture and then everything screws in, it's got a couple of outer uh, holes here that you can put the key into to actually screw this in with glue because it was well glued and uh, with the USB power supply that would probably be more efficient because uh, this one seems to be wasting a lot of power um, whereas with the USB one they're really efficient now and uh, at the 700 milliamps, you'd only be using a couple, losing a couple of watts, um, a, a, well, one and a half watts across the resistor, and the three watts from, uh, or two watts in the LED itself. Uh, no, it wouldn't actually. Uh, let me let me think. The 700 milliamps would be times three. Yeah, that's right. It'd be about two watts in the LED and just a bit less the resistor, so it wouldn't be super efficient, but it would be wouldn't be any worse than this. Um, yeah, it's it's an interesting. I just that was a random thing that I just thought while I was uh, poking about. I wondered what was inside this, and now I know, air and glue and stuff. So just for completeness, and because it's what I usually do, I ended up swapping the color of the LED to warm white. It looks yellowish in this uh, in the, on the video, but that's only because the cold the lighting is compensated for the cold white lights that light the bench, and. Uh, I used uh, standard Luxian Star style back plates with the emitter, a 3 watt emitter, I think, well, I think it's a 3 watt emitter. It's the 1, 2, 3 type emitter. Um, and all I did in this case, it's not screwed down, it is just aligned purely by that lens. Another thing I could have done is try one of the other lenses in. Uh, let me just point that at the wall, it's a fairly diffused beam. Let's turn this off momentarily. Unscrew this. What I did in here, rather than screw the LED down, it's just sliding loose so it sort of self aligns. So, what's this other lens? Uh, let's put that on. So, I place it on top like that, balance it, and then try to not to knock it off as I loosen, tighten this down. And then, just at the end, I'll just touch the lens just to make sure it lines up perfectly. There it goes. And it does sandwich down the LED. Let's see if that's a different beam angle. It's a wider beam angle. That does actually put out a wider beam angle. That's quite nice, actually. That's more diffused. So, um, yes, it turns out that even, well, without machining components, uh, you can actually adapt these with new LEDs and you can put new lenses in. So I'm trying to think where I got this from. I wonder if this came from John Lewis? Not sure. It might have been the clearance. It's not the sort of thing I'd normally buy, but I just saw it. Or was it an online seller? I don't know. I haven't a clue. But um, it's an interesting construction, but one that would just lend itself well to, you know, making lights that are machined entirely out of a block of aluminium. It's quite neat and very hackable.